All right, let's wave. We are live on Facebook here with the lovely Krista. Boy, we've been busy shooting exercise demos, doing work for you guys, uh, getting projects done. Well, let's see. Let's with Krista. We got the body weight glute circuit training you can do at home project coming up, yep. and we got the busy woman's train at home tighten and tone shaped and sculpt. 16 circuit uh, training and diet program coming up. We've been yes. busy on that every week. It's going to take us months to uh, finish. That's how in-depth uh, and intensive the program and the course is going to be. So that's pretty cool. we got all that coming at you. And we're just uh, waiting for an audience to build. And then we're going to show you some pretty cool stuff. Um, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, we do get, often we get questions. So feel free to... Type in your questions, specifically, since I have Krista here today, if you have questions for Krista, by all means, fire when ready, and we will try to answer for you. Let us know you're out there. Facebook loves thumbs and hearts across the screen, so if you're getting on board, by all means, let Facebook know, and they will uh, extend our live reach to other people. Apparently, that's how Facebook algorithms work. Who knew? All right? <laughs> I'm a digital moron, so I don't know anything about those things, but... This is what I'm told, so uh, hopefully you guys, it's uh, not even noon here, so hopefully you've got time to come on board live. How are we doing, Andy? Uh, we're jumping up fast, we're up to 22. Up to 22. How many of you are happy to see Krista with me today instead of that ugly Andy guy? <laughs> Let's, uh, yeah. It's all thumbs. All right. <laughs> no, we're happy to have Krista with us, of course, and she's been working really, really hard uh, donating her time to help us out even on her days off sometimes, so thank you for that. Uh, we are going to start. Uh, Krista's been reading some of my books, so she wanted to tell you uh, specifically about a certain number of my books. So, Krista, which ones did you want to recommend for the ladies? Um, well, when I first started working with Scott, I didn't know much about metabolism, and I was really curious about certain diet things like that were out there, just certain ways to eat, counting calories, all of that stuff. And I learned a lot, and not to do any of those things. <laughs> um, I don't weigh myself, I don't really worry too much about what I'm eating. I eat whole foods, healthy foods, but I don't, I don't know, look too much into it. And I learned a lot about just how it ruins your metabolism. Really crazy diets, and ones that you're cutting carbs out completely, or anything really intense. And it was just interesting to learn. So which books In helped you books, specifically, would you recommend? The, Understanding metabolism. I showed this one to my sister as well because she was kind of leaning into, I don't know, some of the fads, I guess. But she learned a lot in this book. Um, same with Beyond Metabolism. And we also talked, sorry. Yeah. Go, Beyond, <laughs> just so people know, I actually wrote Beyond Metabolism first. Um, and then Understanding Metabolism was based on all the questions and responses we got. So Understanding Metabolism was the follow up book, but in actuality, it was a prequel to be on metabolism, just so people know that. Uh, what else, Krista? What other ones? Um, the permanent weight loss was a good one. Um, just showing you how it's not losing 10 pounds in a week. It's how to keep it off and maintain a healthy weight. Um, and the anti-diet approach, which is self-explanatory, I think. <laughs> and and that they, they were all I just, I've been learning. It's hard to absorb everything right away, but I've been learning a lot. So those are four of my books, folks, um, and specifically Krista has uh, recommended specifically for the ladies out there. So Beyond Metabolism, Understanding Metabolism, uh, Permanent Weight Loss, all right, and The Anti-Diet Approach to Weight Loss and Weight Control. So those are a few of the books that Krista recommends for you ladies out there specifically. You want to get a handle. Remember what I always say. An expert in nutrition and an expert in metabolism are two different expertises, okay? So we've got too many people getting uh, certified in nutrition protocols that don't know anything about metabolism, all right? They think the two are the same, and they're not. They're not even remotely the same. An expert in metabolism is someone who is maybe a doctor in endocrinology or internal medicine. Those are the people you go to to learn about um, the metabolic compensation system and things like that. Now, Krista, you also mentioned something we were going to get to because one of the questions, of course, that we got about Krista is uh, how tall is she and what does she weigh? Well, we know how tall you are, right? I'm five nine. But notice what she just said when she introduced the books. She doesn't know what she weighs. She doesn't weigh herself. That's how you look great all the time, ladies. Stop tormenting yourself and torturing yourself. 
with silly numbers that don't mean anything, okay? Enough already. So that's what the anti-diet approach to weight loss and weight control is all about. And we, you know in previous live episodes with Krista that we established that you eat carbs. There's nothing really you don't eat. Um, and again, same thing people said about Andy. Um, he can eat like that because he looks that way. No, she looks this way because she eats like that. And that's something, women, you got to get through your heads. Stop with the keto nonsense. Stop with fruit makes me fat. Stop with the rest of the fitness industry stuff where fitness industry wannabes are trying to play doctor. They don't understand about metabolism. It's a bunch of the blind leading the blind. Uh, come here for the real deal answers. Any questions or comments there? Andy? Yes, if, if you can go over uh, the title of the books one more time. Okay, well, let's, in no specific order... Permanent Weight Loss, okay, this book, and as you can see on the cover, we've got a lady putting a tape measure around herself, and the subtitle, The Self-Nurturing Mindset, The Habits, and the Diet Strategies for Genuine Lasting Change. All right, remember, the metabolic compensation system takes place in a 12-month window, not a 12-week window. So enough of the fancy transformations, all right, uh, we were just talking earlier how it's competition season in our neck of the woods and what we're witnessing in our local gyms mm. uh, is sad to see where you have these ladies getting ready for competition. They look like they can hardly walk. Their eyes are all sunken back into their head. Uh, they're saying how they got to go to the gym twice a day. And yet I have a guy doing that who's eating carbs, just had a cheat meal uh, or a cheat day three weeks out, looks fantastic, mm. eats carbs. Uh, this week's podcast with Desiree Walker, IFBB Pro, my former client, now known as the Ninja Dentist, all right, eats carbs, uh, got her pro card with me with no, with no cardio, let alone twice a day, seven days a week. Just insane. I'm so glad that uh, someone like Krista um, wasn't exposed to that and she won't ruin herself by thinking 10 minutes on the stage is somehow worth five months of torturing your metabolism. So that's permanent weight loss. Emphasis on the word permanent. Remember, diet works in, th in three windows of time. The immediate, the residual, and the cumulative. Metabolism is all about what happens in the cumulative frame of time. So what you do in a 12-week transformation could have severe consequences in a 12-month time frame because your body remembers and it will actually fight against letting you do it, let you punish it again. So that's what that book's about. Understanding metabolism... The Truth About Counting Calories, Sustainable Weight Loss, and Metabolic Damage. Uh, we've done podcasts on that as well. Uh, Follow-up studies with contestants who are on The Biggest Loser, for example, showing how up to three, four years later, their metabolisms were so suppressed and repressed and sluggish from having dieted and lost weight like that, and how that was a permanent thing um, in terms of being damaged. So, Beyond Metabolism talks about how your brain, biology and the environment create and perpetuate weight issues and what you can do about it. This book is all about the reward centers of the brain and how they light up when you eat what we call hyperpalatable foods. All right, foods that the food industry um, creates in what's called a bliss point. A bliss point is to sort of uh, have an orgasm for the hypothalamus, if you will. So um, food industries create certain foods that emphasize salt, fat, and sugar to light up these reward centers of the brain. It's the same opioid centers of the brain as cocaine and, and other uh, drug inducements. So that book's all about that and how things you wouldn't think of actually help guard against that, like scheduling regular meal times, uh, not doing fad diets, not trying to lose a lot of weight quickly, regular sleep and wake times, the general bigger picture. And then the anti-diet approach to weight loss and weight control is all about how to establish a self-nurturing, self-supporting mindset rather than a self-measuring, self-judging, self-punishing mindset when it comes to um, controlling weight, losing weight, and keeping it off. So those are the four books that Krista recommends. That's my long-winded explanation of each. So uh, get back. If you have any questions for Krista, fire one ready. We've got a couple uh, exercises to show you, but go ahead. Anything, Andy? Uh, nope, but Deborah shared your video, and Narissa says hello from Lethbridge, Alberta. Hi. Hello, Lethbridge. <laughs> so we got some people watching. Uh, yeah, we're up to 41. All right. 42. Well, that's good. All right, so people keep gathering on board. 
Uh, go back, rewind this later. Uh, anything you want to add, Krista, about anything I just said? You're good to go? <laughs> Are you so. <laughs> chomping at the bit for the... Yes. We got a single leg crank to show you today, ladies. Um, again, on my YouTube channel, a lot of these uh, exercises that we're doing, I have a whole new playlist, Best Exercises for Women. You've seen Krista do the quad blast. Now we have a single leg quad blast. So we're upping the intensity. We're upping the ante. Um, this is pretty freaking cool. I'm known for my metabolic isolation circuits and, and, and metabolic uh, uh, complex blasts. So this is another one specifically for the ladies. Because for the ladies, what we've honed in on, most ladies want tighten and tone, shaped and sculpt. Not too many ladies that I know want to build bigger legs and a bigger butt and bigger hips. Would you agree? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we sort of uh, orient the projects that we've been working on toward tighten and tone, shape and sculpt. Um, but this one is a high degree of difficulty, high degree of conditioning, but you'll be motivated just watching it. We're going to start with crossover step ups, and then we're going to go step up into reverse lunge. Then we're going to go single leg forward lunge, and then we're going to finish with Bulgarian split squat. As you can see, we're going to do all one leg, then all the next leg, and then is when you rest. So 8 to 15 reps of each. We're going to keep it to 8. Are you uh, good to go? You think you're ready? I think so. I think so. All right. So single leg leg crank. The quad blast was two leg leg crank. This is a single leg leg crank. And uh, watch this, folks. All right, Chris, let's show them how it's done. And one, one, two, two, three. Three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight. All right. Now she goes into the step up in the reverse lunge. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, sixes. Six, seven, seven, eight, eight. And now she goes forward one, still the same leg. And no, nope, nope. left leg. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, sevens, eights. Now she finishes Bulgarian split squat with a full lockout, nice and slow ones. Twos, threes, four, five, six, sevens, eights. Good. Now she gets ready to do the next leg. No rest. And one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, eights, eights. All right. Right leg, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, sevens, sevens, eights, eights, turns around, does the forward lunge, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and now Bulgarian split squat with a lockout. Right leg. One, two, three, four, five, six, sevens, eights. Piece of cake. All right, while she's gathering her breath, we'll show you that sequence, folks. All you trainers out there, coaches out there, or maybe you teach a class out there, what you just saw, single leg, leg crank, starts with the crossover step up, 8 to 15 reps each uh, single leg, step up into reverse lunge, 8 to 15 reps, one leg, single leg, leg lunge, 8 to 15 reps, Bulgarian split squat, 8 to 15 reps, then you switch sides, so you do all one leg, then all the next leg, and then you rest. So, wicked. You thought the quad blast was hard? Try the single leg leg crank. Wicked hard. Krista's still breathing heavy. <laughs> Tell the ladies all about it, Krista. So good. The quad blast, I loved that. 
This is killer. This is so great. I got my mom actually doing it today at the gym. We were both kind of practicing it because I knew I was supposed to do it today. And I love it. I love it. It gets everything burning big time. So that's how you can combine a lot of body weight stuff into one complex and create a very good and effective and efficient overload toenail right through uh, to the glutes. Um, I wish we had multiple cameras. You could have shot Krista from the back and saw the side of her leg and her glutes working. But very effective, still breathing heavy. And I know that's not because you're standing beside me. We've established that. So very, very effective single leg quad crank. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> how many rounds uh, of that circuit? Like each well, side? this would depend. If you're doing it at the end of a workout, maybe separate from a leg day, you would do a couple rounds. If you're doing it as part of a program, probably two to three rounds. If you're doing it just isolated itself, maybe you're traveling or in a hotel room, whatever, and you've only, you go down to a hotel gym and they've got limited equipment, then you would do maybe four or five. But the, after one set, you'll have to rest a certain amount of time. After two sets, you'll have to rest even longer. Yeah. After three sets, you know what, what this just reminded me of, Krista? Here you are doing the single leg leg crank, high intensity, and we're watching girls at the gym today who are getting ready to compete who can barely walk on a treadmill because uh, they're so starved and overtrained. And then something like this, that's how you burn fat. That's how you work through things. You don't do it by cutting carbs and not having enough energy to walk into a room. All right, so sorry I got a rant about that, but I feel bad for these ladies who are getting such poor advice because um, they're going to have major repercussions a few months from now when the glory of the show is behind them. So, But what a, what a terrific freaking leg crank. Any question? Yes, uh, Stephanie would like to know what Krista's weight training schedule is like. There you go. <laughs> um, it's not very specific. I try to do like three days legs, if not four. I do a lot of leg workouts. Um, Lower body. Yeah, and I don't do any cardio because um, if I'm doing something like this, that's kind of what I consider cardio, and I just really don't like cardio. Um, and... Then like two, you know, maybe two days a week, three days a week. It depends to which days I'm going. Um, I'll do arms and back and kind of throw some abs in there. So you do body part stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So no magic uh, boot camp classes? No. And, you know, no running around and doing endless no. burpees and fancy kicks and twirls and... Okay. Not for me. So again, folks, the wisdom is in the application. Notice what she said. All right, we've already established she eats carbs. All right, we've already established she doesn't do cardio. Lo and behold, what a coincidence, this week's podcast with uh, Ninja Dentist Desiree Walker, who I trained for her pro card, also no cardio, also eats carbs. Hmm, I think I see a trend there, all right? We don't worry about fitness industry trends. We worry about the truth, all right, the metabolic truth. So uh, Krista just dropped some bombs on you. Uh, did you want to maybe describe a typical workout maybe for them? So you go into the gym, maybe give them an example. Um, for example, today, I did legs, which this was added on to that. Um, I started with my warm-up that I learned from Scott. Um, leg swings, Reach uh, front lines. reaches, yeah. Um, and then I put actual ankle weights on and just kind of do some donkey kicks to the back, um, to the side, and then I do some glute bridges with your feet on the bench, lying down. Show sure. <laughs> And I do these to kind of wake... All of my. Yeah, like talk this. louder from down there. Okay. Good. And then sometimes with this single leg stuff. Good. Um, just a few to like warm up my glutes. And then I'll go and do, like today I did squats um, on with the, the bar. Right yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, for I think three or four sets, um, 25 pounds on each side. Um, then I, what did I do? Walking lunges today. Just kind of like three to four sets of everything. Um, and then these. Yeah, and then these. <laughs> and yeah, that was kind of... I just kind of plan it out a little bit in the morning before I actually get to the gym, but I don't really have a set. It's kind of whatever I'm feeling and whatever's not really sore the next day. <laughs> now, a lot of... Uh, there's some other good points here that we're, what we're getting at, and then I'll, I'll get to your questions and comments. But another thing Chris is raising is one of the things that I've been arguing about uh, a lot of functional specialists and a lot of strength specialists, they're, they're saying it's all about the movement, not the muscle. And I say, uh-uh. If you're into physique sculpting, you want to look something like this all the time, it's all about the muscle and less about the movement. All right. 
So I take issue, and I always say train the muscle, not the movement. Sometimes, all right, you train the movement in order to train the muscle, but that's a lot different than um, functional specialists and strength experts who will tell you it's all about movement. I happen to disagree with that strongly, and I've been in the physique transformation game for four decades. So uh, consider what Krista just said, body part training, very, very effective. And then when you add in metabolic complexes like what you just saw, you get the fat burning, mm -hmm. and you build muscle, which burns more energy at rest. That should be what op metabolic optimization is all about. So, uh, question, comments? Yeah, another training question for Krista. Uh, do you include any heavy lifting in your training, like six to eight reps? Yeah, uh, no. Well, so, not really. Not six to eight. I would say eight to ten, <laughs> if that's not that big of a difference. But eight to ten more if I'm doing really heavy. I do try and lift heavy. So one of the elements there is the, the, the misapplication of the term heavy, folks. So in my book, The Able Approach, second edition, I talk about the meaning of the word heavy. Heavy isn't how much weight is on the bar, it's how much stress the muscle is under. And I think that's what Krista's mm -hmm. getting at. She's not about uh, how much she lifted for how many reps. She's about 8 to 10 reps and how that feels on the muscle, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. So it's all about the biofeedback. How does that feel, okay? So really... Uh, what is light and what is heavy has to do with how much stress a muscle is under. As you can see, what we just did in that leg crank was just body weight, all right? So you can't say it was heavy, mm -hmm. but I challenge anyone to complete three sets of it and tell me it didn't feel heavy. Well, and I only did eight reps in each of those, and I thought that was extremely challenging for myself. There and I go. didn't even do 15. And, and that, you know, translation, heavy. Yeah. Because it was hard, right? So training a muscle to failure... How you get there in terms of body sculpting, a lot of the times there's this misinterpretation of the word heavy. Uh, for instance, uh, when I was in the gym last week, I laughed because I just got finished saying on one of my um, live broadcasts something I had to say in the gym because someone who was watching me train said, um, well, that's all the weight you're going to use on that? That doesn't look very hard. you know." And my thing is, well, I'm not here to impress you. I'm not here at the gym to try to impress you today with how much I, I can lift. All right? It's not about how much you can lift, it's how much you should lift. And you should have a program for that so that one day maybe you're doing this many reps and another day you're doing uh, different kind of reps. For instance, I just uh, designed a new program for Andy where he does limit strength reps at the end of an antagonistic body part. So. Um, Andy, just talk to everybody there what I mean by that. For instance, you... Yeah, today I, I did, uh, I trained legs, like, uh, 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 as a body part, um, workout, and then I did limit strength, uh, shoulder press, so... So at the end you finished with sets of five for shoulder press? Yeah, absolutely. After completing your leg work? Yeah. And so the strength work, the, le the load work was for shoulders, the development work was for legs? Yeah, so... Uh, same thing when I do chest, and then I do strength work for back after. So it might be, you know, bent barbell rows, T-bar rows. Uh, for five reps. For five reps, yeah, dumbbell low. rows. And uh, same thing when I train back. Then I'll do maybe low incline uh, bench press, like dumbbell bench press for five reps. or After flat. your back work. After the back, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. and just only like three sets, but five reps, but because, you know, we don't want to cut into recovery, but... So that what we're getting at there, folks, is program design, all right? It's not about walking into the gym. I think I'll train heavy today. Um, you've got to factor in things like recuperation, recovery, uh, stimulus, response, how much, you know, what you did in the gym today should be based on what you did at the gym yesterday and what you're going to do tomorrow, uh, that kind of thing. So that's where program design comes in, and you can check out my online course, Program Design Masterclass, which breaks down... How to uh, write programs, and it's got a whole bunch of my programs in there, um, and how they are written and why they're written that way, factoring in what we call the training model. The training model is a five-factor orientation, um, effort, training strategy, work capacity, recovery capacity, internal biochemical and hormonal environment. Those are things you assess, don't measure. All right, so those are very, very important factors to consider as well. So great questions. We're getting a real intelligent audience lately, so that's great. And we have another question for you, Scott. Um, I've read your hard gainer solution. Do you have any specific tips for female hard gainers? Uh, well, the hard gainer solution applies uh, regardless of gender. Um, <coughs> it's just that uh, with that in mind, the hard gainer solution was aimed at people who want to develop a better physique. Um, most women don't. Uh, most women want to tighten and tone shape and sculpt. 
Um, so the hard gainer in terms of um, rep scheming is more toward muscle development. Um, but if that's something, uh, maybe a, a woman who's skinny fat or who's new to training and wants to look tight and tone, they can certainly do that program. It's not uh, gender biased except for in the ways I just explained because uh, it is aimed at physique development. But a lot of the times women are ignoring resistance training and strength training and overemphasizing cardio, uh, which puts them in that metabolically compromised position. They think they're doing something good for themselves where actually they're not. If you become very fuel efficient in fat metabolism, that's not a good thing. That means that your body is getting better and better at preserving fat and burning less of it. Just like if you buy um, um, a fuel e economic car that, you know, oh, how many miles does it get to the gallon? Well, the more miles it gets to the gallon, the more fuel efficient it is. So uh, if you train your body to be aerobically fit, then it's more fuel efficient in burning fat, which means it's going to burn less of it, not more of it. Um, and that's not what you want. If you're going to do that, that means you have to go longer and longer sessions every time your body adopts. And then eventually, of course, no one has that amount of time in the day and their body can't take running 50, 60 miles a week. All right, so something to consider there as well. And another question for you, Scott. Um, what are the best glute lifting exercises? Uh, this is specifically for postpartum posteriors. Ah, wow, we've, we've got a whole project coming out on mm -hmm. that. So, uh, and again, um, one of the things we explained in, in the, the train at home body weight glute training stuff is it's not about fancy exercises, it's about effective exercises yeah. and how they're sequenced together. So we actually have a whole uh, product coming out on that, should be available uh, by the summer. So I, I usually don't like prioritizing and calling exercises the best because an exercise is only as good as the workout it's slotted into and the program it fits into. So, um, but having said that, I mean, Chris has told you guys a million times how much she loves squats and squat variations and lunge variations. So those things would be at the top of the list. And then specific isolated glute stuff, like Chris had just showed you with some glute hip bridges. Uh, I want to show them a glute extension from plank just for this lady. That's So Chris is just going to get in the plank position and a straight leg uh, glute extension. So she's going to straighten her leg out and then just locked out, up and down. So that's alternating, or you can do single leg. Good. I was actually doing this today. And you can do that with ankle weights, uh, yeah. you know, body weight. I just um, do ankle weights on. Yeah, again, it's, uh, you know, part of our tighten and tone, um, and that's part of our glute training circuit protocol as well. So it's about the movements that are most effective, not fanciest movements, the ones that are harder to execute, because that can destroy a circuit as well. So that was a good question as well. And Stephanie would like to know which program is best for women to tighten up instead of building too much muscle. Well, we, <laughs> boy, are they, it's almost like we're paying you guys to write these in because this is the project we're working on right now. It's called the Busy Woman Train at Home Tighten and Tone Shape and Sculpt uh, Circuit Training Protocol and Diet. 16 circuits for training at home with minimal equipment, just an adjustable bench and some dumbbells and some, a lot of body weight stuff. Yeah. Um, we're on uh, circuit number eight, yeah. and we're shooting every single exercise for that. Um, that should be ready probably late summer because Chris is only available once per week. That's all she can stomach me. So we're going to have that uh, available probably late summer and diet protocol. That'll be a full course. Um, so basically with tightening and toning, shaping and sculpting, you want to do stuff like we demonstrated at the beginning, all right? You want to do a lot of combinations, quad plexes, circuits, what builds muscle is doing set after set with a rest in between of uh, what we call hypertrophy reps, anywhere from 8 to 15. That's going to build muscle, but if you, if you spread that out over a circuit and train kinetic chain exercises along with body part exercises, you're less likely to build muscle um, because you're not uh, training in a building kind of way. You're not doing a bodybuilding workout. You're just using bodybuilding exercises. So that goes back to program design again, but... Just uh, an overview, Krista, for the ladies, what we're working on. What would you tell them about what we're doing with the, with the train at home stuff? Um, definitely full body. And I'm learning a lot about it, too. Just going through, working kind of, you're doing an upper body motion, 15 reps, and then you're going down to maybe doing an ab, and then you're going and doing a leg exercise. It's nice because it's kind of everywhere, but you're doing it fast-paced. So, overall... Yeah, it's 
Everything's, breathing's heavy. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. It's not labor. It's not too much. It's not something you're going to hate in a week. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. And it's different every week. And it's different every week. 16 different workouts. Yeah. So it exists right now as a book on Amazon. All right. The Busy Ladies Train at Home uh, and, and Diet Protocol is my book on Amazon. We're just turning it into a, a complete course with every single exercise um, uh, shot on video with, with me explaining why it is where it is in the circuit and then Krista telling you how it feels and why she likes it or approves of it and, and that kind of thing. So that'll be coming out. Uh, so, geez, it's almost like you guys are, uh, like we're paying you to ask these questions <laughs> and we're not. Uh, but that's a very, very big deal as well. So anything else? All right, so another thing I wanted to show the ladies, all right, and how many people we got out here? Uh, we got about 41 right now. All right, so middle of the day during a work day, that's not bad. Uh, later on, we'll have a lot more. So uh, thumbs across the screen if you're all ladies and you want to know more about tightening and toning, shaping and sculpting for the ladies, or if you're just eavesdropping on a live session, <laughs> um, that's fine too. So one of the things we were discussing and we wanted to show the ladies is the push-up progressions for women, all right? Everyone thinks there's only two variations of push-ups for women, right? We call the ladies push-up from the knees and then the full push-up that mm -hmm. most women can't even do. I'm going to show you why that is incorrect. And again, a knowledge of the body and a knowledge of how the alphabet of training works, which is understanding the ground, understanding gravity, and understanding the body and how those are all interrelated, I can teach you how to do one of the most effective exercises there is out there for women, which is the push-up. So let me just show you in a very basic way that the first push-up for women isn't from the floor on your knees, okay? Basically, you will start in a more vertical position against a wall, whatever. Show them, Krista. And you're just going to push up in a very advantageous leverage position. So the easiest way, as she gets in closer, that'll be easier. If you want even easier than that, maybe you're a bit overweight, you're just starting out, just spread your legs wide for them, Krista, like we showed. Good. So this is how you would start. And you would feel it out, and you would give whatever range of motion your body gives you. And then to make it harder, she puts her feet together, she comes back further from the wall, all right, now that's the simple beginner push-up variation. Now, how do we progress? Well, we drop to the next level. So now she would come, uh, maybe she's got a bench. So you just come to the bench, same thing. Feet very wide, wide apart for easy. You push down. All right, and then you would just, and then to make it harder, feet together. And then over the course of sets or weeks, you just increase your reps. And then eventually she would get right to the floor. Feet, feet spreads really, really wide. And she takes whatever range of motion she can get. And then feet together for the hardest variation. And boom. Good, good stuff. That's how you progress a push-up properly. For the ladies, all right? Now, obviously, I'm not talking about doing all this in a week, all right? You would start with the wall push-ups and the legs wide. And when, it, when that feels comfortable, you bring the legs together. Um, tell them, Krista, all about that, all the variations. Um, I think it's great that we're showing this because I always thought it was just your knees, which seemed like I wasn't going to go anywhere because I had the hardest time doing push-ups. I can still only do, like, three without wanting to smack my face on the ground because it's so hard. But um, I like actually having my hands on the bench still for myself, just so I can get enough reps. But And those are how you progress it. And another way to progress would be with the TRX variation. I want to get inside here, Krista, and face toward that wall. So, yeah. So, just put your hands in the skirts. Yep. Come out in up here. Yep. And walk it up. And then, yeah, uh, down here like a push-up. And then just push in and out. Same idea, her feet wide, and then the lower she gets, now if you just back, yeah, the harder it'll be. Yep. <sighs> so again, we use angles and planes and ranges of motion, all right, in, within which muscles function, all right, you understand that, and then you learn how to progress something, right? So, typical, uh, again, 
What most ladies know, want to get down, Kristen, just get on the knees. What most ladies know is just this, all right? And they call that the lady push-up, and then advanced into the, on the feet. Well, what if you can't do that? Yeah, because it doesn't take that much. Because it doesn't, it's not that hard to do the push-ups from the yeah. knees, because the base of support is so simple. And so, and then going to the full push-up is just too advanced. These variations help you get there step by step, all right? That's what people need to learn that no one's teaching anybody, and I don't know why. This stuff should be um, personal trainer 101, but for some reason it's not. So um, this is a good way to teach push-up progressions from easiest to hardest uh, for the ladies, all right? And then, of course, if you want to see monumentally, ridiculously hard, you watch Desiree Walker do plate push-ups with a single leg support, uh, which is just a freak show of all kinds of strength. But it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. she is a <laughs> specimen and a half. So, um, If you haven't seen that, that's uh, somewhere on my YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, that's pretty in insane. So um, that's the kind of thing that expertise should lend. Uh, to people that often doesn't uh, get taught for some whatever reason. So um, that was um, glad we got that in there. So anything else? Questions? Comments? Yes. Thumbs up. Lots of lots of good comments. Hearts. Whole shabam. All right. Well, let's. Uh, did we ever do the Bosu contralateral elbow? Did we do that on camera? Oh, I don't think so. All right. Well, let's show them that. Okay. More stuff just for the ladies. <coughs> And again, sometimes what looks simple is a lot more deceiving than you think. So here's a cross, there you go, contralateral, elbow to knee touch from the BOSU. Just do maybe eight each side, show them. So it's half sit up, half crunch. <laughs> and then switch sides. And watch how she uh, opens up the elbow at the bottom. She almost reaches the floor and it comes up. Tries to touch that elbow to the knee. Good stuff. Okay. So that's a contralateral elbow to knee touch off the bosun. Now people will be saying, well, what's so hard about that? I do I do sit-ups like that from the floor all the time. It's, Tell them, Chris. Um, I, this I've been throwing in um, a lot, actually. And it's one of my favorites now. And it's so much harder than it looks. And it feels amazing. This you, My balance, obviously, you saw me almost fell off. But it's, it's great. This is one of my favorites by far. You do two or three sets of these yeah. from, from the BOSU, Everything. you'll feel it the next day. Trust me. You'll feel the whole anterior chain from lower abs to upper abs. And there's nothing like feeling an exercise to know you're working a targeted area. So that's another best exercise for women is the contralateral elbow to knee crunch sit-up variation from the BOSU. Uh, it doesn't sound like much of a tweak, but trust me, it, it, it turns... A, a veritable uh, mundane exercise into a monster, especially for the ladies. So that's very important. Uh, anything else? Uh, we got someone asking if they can effect effectively um, modify your ultimate figure program to three days. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, work out um, instead of five. My ultimate figure program, uh, I think, is still on you to me, but uh, we're creating a website for it. We've actually, in my program design masterclass, we've done that. We've dialed down the ultimate figure program into a three-day and a four-day version uh, in order to um, get uh, beginners into intermediate and to advanced. So we've actually already done that, and it's available in the uh, online course as well. So um, we'll find that on Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y. I think it's still on there, but we are taking it off and developing its own website for that. So... Um, Excellent question, excellent question, yeah. All right, another one I wanted to show the ladies is the front alternate raise with a contralateral sidestep. Uh, maybe just grab the fives, Krista, and I know I just showed these to you once. So contralateral just means opposite side, so Krista's going to do a front alternate raise, and then with the other opposite leg, she's going to do a lateral step and a lean down, okay? Very important for adductors of the leg, but still effectively working the shoulders. So uh, what she's so going to do is do just air, uh, is opposite right? leg, contralateral. So so when you oh, do, like this. there you go, and then just oh, keep going. Like this? Yep, yep, and then all in one motion. Go ahead. Yep. There you go. Keep the dumbbells in front. Look straight ahead. Good. 
All right, now turn to the back so people can see it from the back. So this is a front alternate race with a contralateral sidestep. So now you're getting a kinetic chain variation. It's more metabolic. It's powered from the ground, driven through the core. All right, turn around again. Just do a few more. Oh. Yeah, opposite. Good. <laughs> you can do single side. But that, you can do it lateral, but good. And so as she does that, she engages the adductors of the leg. She also engages stop, okay, the anterior chain by moving and, and coming up. Anterior chain is just the abs, okay? And then, of course, it begins itself as a shoulder movement in and of itself. Mm -hmm. So that's very effective, and we just add that contralateral uh, sidestep uh, in order to get that kinetic chain from the ground through the core into the shoulder. Greater metabolic effects for the ladies, but still isolating the shoulders. Tell them about that one. Yeah, Krista. it feels really nice in the shoulders, actually. It took okay. a second for me to get... Yeah, but right, we, but we haven't <laughs> practiced it a lot, so, uh, but that's another effective one that's in a lot of my uh, programs for the ladies, so um, there you go. We've been giving you some, uh, some gems here today, so what else we got, Andy? Uh, your opinion on glute kickbacks and progressions. Sure, yeah, they're good. Um, uh, the new thing, of course, is to do it on a treadmill with, uh, oh, yeah, with, with tape, yeah, with bands. Uh, right. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me, um, but I mean... Any kind of uh, glute engagement um, is, is very effective. But, of course, watch what you're doing. We discussed last time about the nonsense of doing uh, glute bridges with a barbell and things like that because who wants to build a big, wide hips and big ass? Not too many women that I know. So um, it's all about doing a lot of body weight stuff or with ankle weights mm -hmm. and uh, doing it uh, with engagement uh, without necessarily trying to build the muscle in the area, but tighten and tone it. So, uh, but yeah, that's a, you know, then glute machine, yeah, not all that stuff works, but it's where an exercise falls in a program that makes it effective or non-effective. So that's very important as well. All right, so that was about 45 minutes, folks. Uh, we thank, uh, Chris has been working real hard uh, for me and with us, uh, get that project out to you. Um, again, it's 16 circuits, so it's going to take us a while to get it all done, but wow, is it in-depth. Uh, so we're happy to have that. Hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed being out there and learned a little something today. And thanks for being out there. Wouldn't make much sense for us to be here if you weren't there. So uh, thanks for that. Go back to the beginning. Look at the books uh, of mine that Krista recommends for start learning about metabolism and, and maybe unlearning some things you think you know about nutrition and metabolism, things like that. Any final questions for Krista, since I'm just waxing on at the mouth? Uh, nope, just thumbs up, hearts, okay. good comments. All right. So, yeah, we appreciate the thumbs up and the hearts. I know they're all for Krista. Krista, parting words for the ladies before you're uh, off on your vacation? Um, no, just hi. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks. So, uh, stay tuned. Uh, we got Sunday breakfast with the coach coming up. And, uh, yeah, I'll go live as many times as I can. And then, uh, like I said, we got a lot of projects coming at you, including uh, Andy. You're not keeping me on the ball there. Andy's on oh, the yeah, today. Oh, yeah, so yeah, my, my so triple got, A project. We got Andy's, Andy's awesome abs. Oh, the triple A, I like yeah. that. We got Andy's <laughs> awesome ab circuits training protocol coming at you, and it's awesome. But talk about in-depth as well. Not only we got Andy's uh, circuit training for abs on how he maintains uh, tight abs year-round. Come on over here in the shot, Andy. So just, just for a second, and then you can get back to your camera work, which you're good at. Just get in front of me. Show me how to lift the shirt up. Give him a quick flex. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, you turn the camera. Okay. All right, screw off. No one wants to see that. <laughs> All right. No, we got Andy's awesome abs circuit. Oh, triple A. I like that, Andy. I like that nickname. We got that almost ready to almost ready to come at you, but it's not just that. How Andy gets his abs and keeps his abs year-round, the, the protocol he used to do it, uh, again, about effective exercises, not fancy exercises. Sometimes they blend. But within that is all kinds of diet stuff. Andy's meals, his meal prep, um, the kind of stuff he eats, and his epic cheat days, which I want, I'm interested to see myself. I've witnessed a couple of them, and they're pretty sick. Um, so I want to see uh, what he actually recorded for you guys. So it's actually got a lot of day-in-the-life stuff. Andy pre prepping his meals his actual meals, what he thinks about, all the kind of things it takes not only to get abs. Getting abs is one thing, keeping them is another. 
So we got Andy's awesome abs uh, circuit training protocol, how to get abs and keep them year round. That's almost ready. So that should be within the next few weeks, I'm told by my business manager as he cracks a whip at me and tells me uh, it'll be out when he's damn good and ready. So <laughs> he's almost damn good and ready. I'm just a slave to Andy and everybody else, folks. Uh, I just do what I'm told um, after four decades. I'm not quite ready for the trash heap yet. Uh, I'm old, but I'm also experienced. So, yeah, so Andy's Awesome Abs Training Project is both of us, Andy and myself, uh, talking about all that goes into something like that uh, from the principles of exercise physiology and my innervation and met training methodology and how and why that all sort of meshed and how and why that led to Andy getting on the cover of all kinds of magazines when there's thousands and thousands of other men trying to do it. Uh, Andy went right to the front of the line. So uh, we love that. So that's a long explanation. Uh, I just feel bad because I left it out. I mean, it's almost ready to go. So we're pretty excited about that. So uh, yeah, so hopefully people are giving us thumbs up and hearts for that too. And if there's any parting words or questions... No, just a lot of thank yous and uh, saying they, they enjoyed everything and all the demos and yeah, we're good. All right, folks, we'll see you next time. Thanks for Krista for helping me create a whole new playlist on YouTube, Best Exercises for Women. We're adding to it a little bit at a time. As a matter of fact, tomorrow on Facebook, uh, stay tuned, uh, late morning my time for Krista doing another little magical insert uh, exercise demo for Best Exercise for Women as well. So... Uh, again, thanks for being out there, and we will see you next time.